We woke up this morning, thought we'd take the van out for a drive. So we came out, put the key in the ignition, turned it, and all the dash lights lit up. All kinds of warning lights, and the vehicle did not start. I tried to take the key out, the key was locked in the ignition. So don't panic if this happens to you. It could be a dead battery. Hi, I'm Dave with one adventure at a time. In today's video, I'll show you how to switch out your old battery and replace it with a brand new one on your Ram ProMaster. I'll show you what tools you need and a few tips along the way. So let's get started with the tools. You're only going to need four tools for this job. You'll need a ratchet wrench with a 13 millimeter deep socket. You'll need a 10 millimeter wrench, a regular Phillips screwdriver, and a little stubby slot screwdriver. If you don't have one of these, you can use a quarter and it works just as good. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is locate the battery. So it's on the driver's side on the floor and we're gonna remove that cover so we can access the battery. And the only tool we're gonna to need to do that is either a quarter or the little stubby screwdriver. So the first one here, all we have to do is turn this button 90 degrees to where it will lift up. And you can see it'll lift right up. And then we'll go to the little plastic threads or the screws and give those a turn until they stop. And we'll do that all the way around. And this is where the stubby screwdriver or quarter comes in handy because these areas can be hard to reach. Once we've got those all loosened, I'm just gonna pry it up a little bit to where I can get my hand in there. And there's two tabs up here. There's one tab here and one tab here. So we wanna pull those out. So we're gonna pull this toward the seat. Give it a little jerk, it unsnaps. And then we remove the cover. The first thing we're going to do is remove the bracket that secures the battery. For this, we'll need that 13 millimeter deep socket. Put the bolts in the coffee holder. And I found out it's easier to remove this if you put your finger right in this hole at the front of the van, lift up on it, and then push it back toward the seat. And then it comes right out. For safety reasons, we're gonna start off with removing the negative lead. And this is pretty cool. The negative lead has a quick release on it. And if you look over here, this bar right here, if you just push that with your thumb, it opens up. And then all you gotta do is rock this back and forth to get it off. If for some reason you don't have the quick release on your battery, all you have to do is use a 10 millimeter driver here and take this bolt off, this nut off. And then you can remove the negative wire. For our purposes, we'll shake it back and forth, remove this and put it out of the way. Next, the positive lead. Now the positive lead is pretty simple to get the cover off. It's got these two tabs right here. And so we're just gonna pull back on those little plastic tabs and that releases it and then you just lift. Give it a little tug. And it might look intimidating, like there's a lot going on there, but really all we have to do is remove these two Phillips screws right here. There's one here, there's one here, and then we'll loosen the clamp that's on the positive terminal and that's a 10 millimeter and we'll use our 10 millimeter uh, wrench for that. So we'll start with the two Phillips screws. Now we'll grab our 10 millimeter wrench and start loosening this bolt. And we don't have to remove it, we just have to loosen it. So we'll give it a few turns. All right, once that's loose, we'll have to shake it back and forth a little bit, wobble it till you get it to come off there. 
There's actually plastic inserts where we remove those screws. And if you just pull up a little bit, they'll come out. And you don't want to break this harness. But so we'll just shake it back and forth. And that whole unit comes out. And then we just move that off to the side. Now we're, this is going to be in the way constantly. So we'll have to make sure that we're not going to pinch any wires or damage it. But now we have access to the battery and it's time to remove it. If you look close at the battery, it has these handles on it that fold up. I think this is the hardest part of the whole job is getting the battery out because it's heavy and the coffee holder is in the way. So I got to make sure I start with the driver's side of the battery and lift that up first and then not get it all tangled up in the wires here for the positive side. And it's heavy, so two people is definitely helpful, less chance of hurting yourself. I'm gonna give it a shot. Yay, <laughs> it's heavy. Now that we got the battery in, we're gonna go ahead and hook the positive side up. And we're gonna do this in reverse order. When we took the battery out, we started with the negative. Now we're gonna start with the positive to make sure we're staying safe. We're gonna line it up with these two screw holes here. There's one here and there's one here. And if you look here and here, that's where we're gonna line up those two screw holes. And then the clamp's gonna go right on the terminal. So this clamp right here is gonna go right on this terminal. So it just kind of fits down in there. I have to apply a little bit of pressure on these plastic inserts. And it's ready to put in the screws. Now we're gonna take our 10 millimeter wrench and we're gonna tighten up the clamp on the terminal. Okay, that's nice and snug. We're gonna put the positive lead right on this screw here and put our 13 millimeter nut on top. Now we're gonna put the cover back on and it's got these two snaps right here on top. You'll see one there and one there. And those are gonna line up with these two areas here. And on the other side, you do wanna be careful. You got a couple wires that are going into your fuse box. So just be aware of these wires and don't try to put too much strain on them. So let's snap it back in. Just a little bit of pressure and it snapped right in. Now we're gonna move on to the negative terminal. This is the negative lead and we're gonna stick it back on the negative terminal. And it has a quick release on it, so we have it open right now. And then when we get on there, we're gonna push it tight, push it down there. So we'll just work it back on. And then we'll snap it. And that's on. Now that we have the positive and negative leads connected, let's secure the battery inside the battery box. We'll grab the bracket. And as you see on the front part of the box, it's notched. And the bracket itself's got a little curve to it, so that slides right in there. Make sure your threads are sticking up. And it goes back in this slot here. This little brace goes right inside the two holes and has rubber on the end of it. And that's what touches the battery itself. And that goes right through that thread. Now we're gonna grab our 13 millimeter deep socket and put that nut back on. And that's nice and snug. We're gonna grab the breather tube and this end here plugs right into the battery. There's a hole in it. It fits right in there. And then the bottom part of the tube there's a hole in the floorboard and it goes right out that hole. Oops. 
just give it a little push and then direct the end of the plastic tubing through that hole that's in the floor. Okay, now we're gonna put the cover back on. Now to make this easier, it's got a button that goes through this hole right here. And it's got two tabs over here. Now on the floor, the tabs are actually underneath the brake and the accelerator pedal. And if we line those up first, it's gonna be a lot easier to put this in. So if you look on the back, these little plastic turns, I noticed that if you put them to the inside first, it's a lot easier to drop this into place and then tighten it up. Get the tabs in right here. We kind of make a snap sound and then we'll make sure this button goes through here and then we can turn it 90 degree angle. And then all we have to do is grab our screwdriver and our quarter and give these all a half a turn. Now the one on the other side that's underneath the console, we're gonna use the screw, we're gonna use the quarter for that because it's hard to reach with the screwdriver. Now that the driver's side's done, I've moved on to the passenger side. Passenger side's a little more tricky because there's a console that's in the way and the step that we built. So if you have a little short stubby screwdriver, you can use that. Or I'm just going to use a quarter here and I'm gonna hold down on the mat. Carrie's gonna get down there with the camera and show you what I'm doing. And then just give this a turn. And then the same with this one over here. And that's locked in place. We're done. We have killed our battery off in the past before, and this time it would not jump start or take a charge. So time for a new battery. We went down to the dealership. When you go to the dealership, make sure you have your VIN number with you. It's on the inside of the door and also on your registration tags. So you give them that number, they look it up, They'll, they know exactly what part or battery to give you. And while you're at it, ask them if there's any recalls because that same VIN number also pulls up the recalls that you have on your vehicle. So if you have the vehicle worked on at the dealership for a battery replacement, they're going to charge you here in California a minimum of $75 an hour plus the cost of the battery. So that can get quite expensive. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If so, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up and we'll catch you next video. Let's see if this starts. Yes.